Welcome to the second part of the tutorial, where we'll look at the shortcomings of ChatGPT and use our functions with parameters to overcome them. First, make a file in your base directory called ba chatgpt noweather.py. And inside, we'll just use the following basic code. We import OpenAI, we have the OpenAI API key using the config module, which reads it from our env file again. Then we just have a simple function which takes a query, then makes a ChatGPT call and returns the result. This is just a simple ChatGPT call we're all familiar with. And if we ask it something like, what's Python, we'll get a pretty good answer. The problem is that it doesn't have access to any recent information. So if we try the following call, for example, what's the weather in Seoul? Now let's try and run this. And I'm sorry, I cannot provide real-time information. However, you can check the weather in Seoul by using a weather website or app. Now, that's not very good, is it? So yeah, let's go ahead and fix that in this part of our tutorial series. Now first, sign up for a free account on weatherapi.com. Now, I'm not affiliated with weatherapi.com in any way, but they will give you a pro account for 14 days for free, but it will automatically switch back to free afterwards. So it's just a free account. You don't have to provide any payment or credit card information. So don't worry about it. You just have to make an account and then you're done. Just make a free account, get your API key for weatherapi.com and then go to the env file and add your weather API key in the same manner as your ChatGPT key and save this file and then we'll be good to go. We'll need to create a function that can provide ChatGPT with the current weather. In the APIs folder, create a file called weather.py. In this file, we'll first add our imports. We use config as always to read our API key, the weather API from the env file in this case. We will use the request library to make the API call again and the JSON library dumps or dump to string to get the JSON response and turn it into a string. So ChatGPT can work with it because ChatGPT can only work with string values. Let's define our get current weather function for ChatGPT to use. We declare a function named get current weather, which takes a location as argument and returns a string type. Again, the string type return annotation is optional. First, we test if a location was given, and if not, we return an error message in string format. Then we create a simple object called API params, which contains the parameters we need to send to the weatherapi.com API. The key is read from our env file using the config method. Q takes the location from the location argument and we set air quality index or AQI and alerts to no. We declare a variable named response, which will hold the response we get from the API. We use the request library to make a get request to the weatherapi.com API, passing the API object as the parameters. We then use the .json method to get the response in JSON format parsed to a dictionary. But since ChatGPT cannot read a dictionary or object format, we have to then again dump the string, which makes the thing into a string. So we sort of double parse it. And then we have a string. So this is just a type hint saying that the variable named string response is of type string. You can leave out this part and it still works fine, which is this double parsed object. And then we return the string response for ChatGPT. The response colon requests.models.response part might look a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with it, but it's just a way to say that the response variable is of the type requests.models.response. 
It's the same as here, except here we have a string str response is the name of the variable and we're saying it's type string. The same goes here. It's, it's a variable name is response and the type is requests.models.response. So if we look at the documentation for a requests.models.response type object, we will see that it has a .json method, which parses the JSON for us. So that's what we called here, which is why we were able to call this response.json in the first place. So why did I put this in here? Well, it's just to make you aware that some kind of response has a certain object type and you have to be aware of what kind of variables you're working with, what kind of data structure it is, and what kind of methods you can run on it. If you're not aware, you might just return this from the function and then ChatGPT will throw an error because it has no idea how to work with a request.models.response object. But again, you could just leave this out and the code will work just the same. So that was just a little detour into the basics of type hinting. Let's actually test our function. Add a print statement and just fill in any city here. I'm going to use Amsterdam, then save and run this file. And here we go, location Amsterdam, and it's the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit, the exact location, wind degree, wind speed, everything. Great. So now, of course, make sure and either comment out or remove this print statement because we don't want it to run every time we import the function and now this is the actual function we'll be running but as we learned in the previous tutorial part you also need a description of what our function is and what it does to pass into G chat gpt with our request to keep our code a little bit organized let's create a new folder in our base directory called function descriptions and you can see i've already created this folder and inside this new folder you're going to create a file named weather.py and these files will have the same name but it's fine they're in different folders so we have a new folder with another weather.py and in here we're going to actually describe the function for chat so i just named the object describe get current weather because it's a description of the get current weather function and gave the name of get current weather in location remember this name is just for chat gpt and doesn't necessarily have to match the name of the real function which is why i'm purposely giving it a slightly different name just to show you that it doesn't matter we have a simple description of what the function does which is providing the current weather in a specific location. The parameters we need for our function will be of type object and have only a single property, namely location, which will be of type string. We then provide a description for the location property, the location as a city name, example given Amsterdam. This description is for ChatGPT to understand what this property is, as ChatGPT is going to generate these properties, parameters, for us when asking us to call the function. Finally, we set the location property as required, telling ChatGPT that it must provide the location in order to call this function, as we need it to be able to provide the weather for a specific location. Note, we can add multiple required properties to the list. Go ahead and save and close the weather.py file in your function descriptions folder for now. Now that we have our setup done, let's make our super powered chat GPT. Create a new file in your base directory and I'm going to call it bb chat gpt with live weather dot i'll just expand this slightly so you can see the name again i'm just using these names so they line up nicely which is nice for later reference but obviously don't use this naming convention outside of this tutorial in this new file first let's add our imports 
we'll use JSON to parse arguments that ChatGPT provides for us. And the next two should be familiar by now, a OpenAI decouple import config. Then we import the get current weather function, which we just wrote ourselves, and the description we prepared from their respective folders. We also import our utils color printer, and of course we set our open API key as always. Now let's define our function. Our function takes an argument named query, which represents whatever the user typed on our fictional website. We first define the messages list we'll send to ChatGPT, which will consist of a single object containing the user message. We do not provide any system or setup message before the user query for now because it's not really needed. It's pretty simple so far. We define a variable called functions and even though we only have a single function for now, this must be a list as the ChatGPT API expects a list of functions. That's also why I'm calling this variable functions even though it's technically a function. We then make our initial ChatGPT call as we did many times before, passing in the model, the messages, the functions, and we set the function call to auto. Again, we leave it up to ChatGPT to decide if it needs to call a function or not. We directly index into the object to get choices, index zero, and then the message, and catch this in the variable named first response, which we append again to the message history. First, we call the dot get method. On the first response, we received back to see if it has a function call attribute on it. If it does, we know JetCPT wants us to call a function. We then create a dictionary named available functions, and we only have one function for now, but we're going to start coding in a way that allows us to expand to more functions in the future. So this dictionary contains the ChatGPT name of the function and the real function. So this is the name that ChatGPT has been told, the name we used in our function description over here. And this is the actual function, a reference to the real function. Then we define the function name as the first response function called name. So this is what ChatGPT will return to us and this specific index will hold the function name of the name it wants to call. Then we use a function to call, which is just available functions with this function name. So this will be get current weather in location. And because we only have one function, this key will of course result in this function being here. But again, we can use multiple functions if we code in this manner in the future. We then use the json.loads method to parse the arguments we received from ChatGPT into a Python object and catch it in the function args variable. And this is just the index in the response object we get from ChatGPT, which contains the function arguments. Then we actually call the function, the function to call, which we defined here, which is just a reference to get current weather. And we pass in the location, which is the function arguments we got here, dot get location. We only have a single uh, function with a single possible argument right now. So we can cheat a little bit like this and the response gets caught in function response. Then we'll append the function response in the messages again, just like we did in part one where we make sure the content has the function response. We then make a second ChatGPT call, this time without providing any functions, but adding the entire message history, including the function call and response, and then catch the response in the second response variable. We append this response to the messages list as well, and then color print our message history for our own learning purposes and return the second response context index. Of course, if this block was never triggered, no function call was necessary. We just print the messages and return the first response's content. 
Now go ahead and add the following print statement to the bottom of your file, just asking a regular non-weather related question. And let's save and run this. And it just gives us a political answer. The most delicious fruit is subjective and can vary based on preferal, a personal preference, blah, 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 blah. So that's working as it always does. And now let's go and ask it a weather related question. And now again, it should trigger our function call. So let's see what it does. And there we go. What is the weather in Amsterdam? Get current weather in location, passing in the arguments location Amsterdam. Well done, chat GPT. Here's the function response with this whole object and then it says, the current weather in Amsterdam is partly cloudy with a temperature of 19 degrees Celsius. The wind is blowing from the west at a speed of 15 miles per hour. They actually use kilometers in the Netherlands, but it also says kilometers per hour, so that's fine. The humidity is 68% and the visibility is 10 kilometers. So yeah, that's it for, for part two. This is pretty cool so far. We have this huge garbled mess and ChatGPT just makes it into a natural, easy to read response. It decides when to call our function and if to call our function, if it needs to call our function. If it's not necessary, it won't actually call our function. So that, that's pretty cool so far. We have normal ChatGPT, but it can also answer weather related questions right now. So. In the next part, we'll actually take this another step further. We'll have multiple potential functions and we'll even look at making multiple consecutive function calls in a row. So we'll call multiple functions and then have ChatGPT combine the answer of all these function calls into a single answer. Now that's pretty cool, right? So I'll see you soon in the next part.